Hello, YouTube family. I'm Patty Jackson. I am your auntie of pop culture, as I say. It's not cute, not knowing. And now we're going to know. Let's get this hug in. Can I thank you for the comments? The comments are interesting. What you guys think, what's going on, whether it's the Tyson fight, stories that you're tired of. I have a follow-up to the Caitlin Clark story that I talked about yesterday, but I, I threw out a lot. We're going to start off with Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence, why I feel this message was directed at me. No one needs to be concerned about my health. I am fine. I am healthy as hell. Well, Martin, it's good to hear that. He's starring in Bad Boys 4. Go see this movie. It's good. Ride or Die with Will Smith. But they've been doing an extensive promo tour. And he's just been a little different. I'm not the only one that, that noticed it. A lot of people noticed it. He said his demeanor has been a little different because he is suffering the loss of a loved one. I'm telling you, he is going on this nationwide tour. And they're not trying to get people hyped and wondering and this and that. They're not trying to do any of that. So I understand there's a whole tour out there and people don't need to think you're sick, know you're sick, you won't admit you're sick. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Are you so Okay. Okay. Sometimes you just got to say, okay. Cat Williams is going out on another tour. He does not let the grass grow under his feet. His new tour, which is for next year, it's called Heaven on Earth. And I know in my neck of the woods, near Atlantic City, he's going to be doing a show with the Boardwalk Call, but he's going across the country. Cat is back. Cat Williams, Heaven on Earth, a whole new show. To G.P. Henson, not only is she hosting the BET Awards this year, but she goes right into filming her next movie with Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry has a new movie that he's filming for Netflix called Straw. It's Taraji P. Henson, Sherry Shepard. Hey, Sherry. Tiana Taylor. Tyler Perry is going to write and direct this movie, which is also going to feature Sinbad. I'm so glad that someone's giving him work. Even though, yes, he's still recovering from his stroke, but to write a role just for him, it's so important. And it's one of the things that makes Tyler Perry stand out. Glenn Turman is also in it. Rockman Dunbar from, from the TV series Rock years ago on Fox. But Straw is the story of... A woman who has fallen on hard times and the rabbit hole and intrigue that she goes through throughout. But this is going to be the next Tyler Perry film that he is going to be working on. Mandisa, the American Idol singer who didn't win, but incredible voice. You know, she moved into gospel and she had had some success, but she's also publicly talked about her battles with weight as well as depression. It was really a shame when she was on American Idol and Simon was just mean as hell and just always talking about her weight, not really making her feel good. She had lost 100 pounds, but then she gained it all back plus 75 more. When a person is battling an addiction, obesity, it's hard and people don't understand the struggles that people go through. Mandisa, who passed away in April, they're saying she died from class three obesity. She was almost 500 pounds at the time of her death. And all the medical issues, because it is not healthy to be that weight. You, you think of your heart and just everything just going on in your body with being that heavy. She had lived down in Nashville. Apparently she lived by herself because she had been dead for three weeks when they found her. 
Mandisa also suffered from depression. She lost one of her closest friends to, I believe it was cancer. And she had sunk into a depression. And her comfort was food. Mandisa had just an incredible voice. You know, for someone who didn't win, she left a mark on people as they enjoyed the show, watched it, followed the singers. But Mandisa, so sad to hear of how she died and what happened. <sighs> Prayers for her family. Prayers for her family. I think that's why it took them so long to determine and her family was adamant that she didn't do anything to herself. But if you're found dead three weeks after you died, this is not not a good situation. But prayers to the family of Mandisa. You guys really had a lot to say bringing up Caitlin Clark. She's a WNBA superstar. But she's catching a hard time like most rookies are. A lot of eyes are on the WNBA because they ain't never watched the game before she stepped into it. It's rough. The girls are rough. I got to say they're rough. With Caitlin, it's a double-edged sword, an amazing talent. But there's going to be resentment with the endorsements. And you guys to constantly hear about her like she invented the WNBA and... That's kind of like a little deliberate thing. With Caitlyn, they felt that, oh, she's getting a rough time, you know, out there. The, the woman, you know, hit her and she fell to the floor. Well, Angel Reese, somebody choked her last week. No foul, no nothing. It was like it was normal. And I saw another incident where I'm like, they're not calling fouls here. Is it a double standard? In many ways, again, because, you know, double standards work two ways. Is she being shown the favor because she's white? According to, and I saw this on Fox yesterday, Clay Trey, he has some company. He says that Caitlin Clark is being attacked because she is a white heterosexual woman in a black lesbian league. That statement, so shocking. There are more than just lesbians in, in the WNBA. There's a lot of heterosexual women in the WNBA. But when he made that statement, it was on Fox. I was like, ah. It's, it's debatable. There's a lot of talk around it. And a lot of you, a lot, wait a minute, y'all funny. I'm sick of hearing about Caitlyn Clark. That's that's a lot of comments I got. And then people say there is, there is a bias. You know, maybe they look at her as being the great white hope will save the WNBA. All eyes were not on those ladies. So when you think about marketing and what they want to promote with families, and I'm trying to promote that it's a bunch of bullies on the WNBA and that it's women coming together and they're playing ball. They're not getting paid what the NBA players. When I think of Brittany Griner, for everyone who said, why was she over in Russia? The WNBA players don't make a lot of money. So during their off season, they got to make money so they'll play overseas. It's a sad situation, but it just goes to show Racism still exists. Bias still exists. And for both women, I think of Caitlyn, I think of Angel Reese. I think they're both going to do well in the WNBA. But rookies, I don't care if it's the NFL, I don't care what sport it is, rookies are always tested. Um, if you ever watch any documentaries on Michael Jordan, he said they came to hell when he first came into the league. He said, oh, Rookies, unfortunately, are always tested. But I would love to know your comments about that particular statement. So yesterday, I had a chance to leave work early. And I had a chance to meet and interview actor Kevin Costner. Untouchables. No way out. 
Yellowstone, Dancing with Wolves. Now he's doing like a series of Western movies, but an incredible, incredible actor. He's got a new movie. It's another Western, Horizon, an American saga. It was during the period before the Civil War and right after the Civil War where people are like, okay, the South then lost. We're going to head west. And a lot of people did. What was out west? A lot of Indians, their land, their families. And it was brutally taken away from them by all the people that moved west. he wanted to tell the story of the people who who moved west and, and what you know everyone's like there's gold in them hills and what they faced and how it was wrong to move in on the land of other people because they were different and another race and we just had a great great conversation he's a very nice guy I was thinking wow this is gonna be the bodyguard bodyguard part two that's what, that, what my friends were teasing me but Kevin Costner wonderful actor had a wonderful conversation with him and he told me that he would love to do a romantic comedy he says everyone thinks I'm serious but he says I'm really funny and I would love to do a romantic comedy. And I said, well, you put it out there, it could possibly happen. But Horizon, an American saga, it opens in theaters because there's four parts. Part one and two, first one, June 28th, the second one in August, parts three and four sometime next year. But this is a project that he directed and produced and put it all together. I don't think he's coming back to Yellowstone. You know, it's a big controversy. He's coming back to Yellowstone. I don't know, child. I don't know if that shows he's coming back. But that's a whole nother mess. But he's got this movie here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Allied and Mr. Costner. Because it was a great interview that I'm going to be posting before the movie come out on my IG. Y'all know my IG is WDAS Patty. It's not cute not knowing and now you know. Thanks so much for joining me. It's conversation. Yes, I ask a lot of questions, but there's a whole lot of scoop too. Thanks for joining me. I'm Patty Jackson. I am your auntie of pop culture.